Are you ready to join me in an adventure to explore the complexation of aluminum by nitrogen containing ligands? If that sounds complicated right now, don't worry about it. By the end of this presentation, you'll have complete understanding of the subject. My name is Hannah Cavender, and in the next few minutes, we're going to explore the how and why of my research, and you'll actually be able to witness the scientific method in action. So let's begin by asking, what do you mean by all this complexation of aluminum business? Well, this is just a way of saying that we're interested in capturing aluminum and holding it in place. Why would we even be worried about this pesky metal? Let's take a look at the environment. Aluminum exists in the soil, and when the soil becomes acidic, the aluminum becomes free to interact with other things in the soil, such as plant roots. Once aluminum enters the roots of the plant, it can cause a decrease in the production of fruit and size of the overall plant. Now that we know the problem, the next question is, how do we trap the aluminum? What does aluminum attract to? When we asked this question, we found that other scientists have discovered that nitrogen and aluminum make great friends. What I mean by this is that aluminum is attracted to nitrogen in the same way that a bee is attracted to a flower. However, a bee will eventually leave the flower. In this case, we want the aluminum to stay connected with the nitrogen. At this point, we must find a way to keep the aluminum caged so that it cannot escape. What we want is a structure that will act similarly to a clamshell. It will remain open until the aluminum enters and then shut and hold it firmly once it has. So we decided to investigate compounds with a ball-like structure. To better understand the nature of the relationship between aluminum and this ball-like structure, we use the assistance of a computer program. Also, by using this technology, we are able to visualize how aluminum interacts and save time and chemicals. This model illustrates the computations that we were using. Here you see our ball-like structure, the carbons are in the black, the nitrogen are red, and aluminum nestled closely here in the center. We looked at this size of the ball, but we also wanted to see what would happen if we made the ring bigger. We noticed that we couldn't form a bond right here, so we needed to fix this by adding an R, which is more carbons and another nitrogen. This would link over at the top and now form somewhat of a more cage-like structure, which was our goal. So now that we have our model, we can actually do the synthesis to create this in the lab. Hopefully, you've enjoyed your experience and learned something along the way. Research is a diligent process, but can also be a lot of fun. 